thank you for taking time. I appreciate it today. Yeah, happy to be with you guys. Well, we got a lot of interesting quarterback stories here in the AFC North you might have heard about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just curious uh, what you think is going to happen with the Deshaun Watson situation and how that guaranteed $230 million is going to affect uh, other quarterbacks' deals. Yeah, I've been talking about this since it happened. I've studied this thing. I've been in the league. I've been on an agent, and I've always sort of wondered – if and who would be the first fully guaranteed veteran contract, I'm talking real guaranteed past, like the Kirk Cousin three-year guarantee a few years ago. I thought maybe Ben, you know, maybe Aaron Rodgers, maybe Russell Wilson, maybe Pat Mahomes, maybe Josh Allen. None of them, and it turns out it is this guy. And I just think it's just kind of an icky feeling, you know. It's through his own misconduct, that's what really is amazing. Through his own misconduct, he created the perfect storm for a contract. And they were bidding, and of course we heard that he's a Southern kid, it was Atlanta, it was New Orleans, it was Carolina, and all of a, and Cleveland was out, and then all of a sudden Cleveland was in. And they were only in, of course, because of this monster contract, which looks to me is written by an agent. And so what we have now is that precedent. And, you know, the next one is Lamar Jackson. What are we going to see with that precedent? And all the owners are going to try to explain it away. That was unique. That was one in a lifetime. That was an aberration. But if I'm Lamar Jackson, if I'm Justin Herbert, if I'm Joe Burrow, I mean, all these guys, like, you're telling me you're not going to pay me what they paid Deshaun Watson? And I, and with no character issues? So this is going to be something to watch. I think we already saw Steve Bashotti complain about it at the owners' meeting. Um, I just think it's the most stunning contract in the history of the league. Well, I want to ask you about Lamar in just a second, though, but one more on Watson. Do you think he's going to play this year? I, do you think he's going to play at all? And and this stuff, the cases aren't going to be – they're going to go into at least next year, right? Well, the cases litigation-wise will go to next year. I, I just think that they have to come down now. They can't just hold this out there. Because, yes, more reports are coming out, but it's all about the same behavior. I mean, I had Jenny Bunchers, who wrote the New York Times piece on my podcast last night, and it's just the same stuff we heard about for a year with Deshaun Watson a pattern of behavior with massage therapists that keeps coming out. And I think they have to suspend them for a long time, whether that's a full year and they hold it open, whether it's a full year that he can somehow dial it back if there's good behavior. I don't know. But this is a league that cares about women, allegedly, and I don't see how it gets on the field. I really don't. Well, that makes two of us, uh, and I just can't, you know, you know the Steeler fans here, they love to see the Browns squirming, and, and Jimmy Haslam here, it seems like no matter what they do, it just doesn't work, Andrew. Well, I, you know, I think the football people obviously drove this. I mean, I don't know how Haslam's, because I'm sure the football people are saying you can never get a quarterback like this, ever, ever. They don't come to free market. And you're lucky if the number one pick gets this good. So they did what they had to do. And But as for the PR, they just, I'm sure they thought it would fade away. And it will fade away. But whether it takes a year or two years or three years, it's not clear.